Well, I think one of the most important things a student can do is read as many poems from the anthology as they can make time for. So, you know, so even if they just set aside an hour to just go through and browse and use different category searches. If, you're, if you know that there's a particular subject you're interested in, you can look through the poems that are about war, for example, or relationships. I chose Beat Beat Drums because I'm a big war buff. You know, I like the deep sort of metaphysical philosophical poetry. I went to the humor part of the website and I loved this poem. The random poem finder is a really good way to pull something up you wouldn't ordinarily find. Um, Revenge, I was just skimming the list and I really liked the sound of how angry and passionate she was and um, the poet actually, she had a pretty amazing life story so I was attracted to that. Looking at the poet gallery and looking for a poet who there's something about the way they look. What tends to happen when people connect to a poem is that there's a particular line that jumps out and just sounds beautiful, or a particular image that leaps forward into the mind. Which ones are your favorite lines? Um, I definitely like the end, yeah. because after reading all of it, you like you read the end and you're like, whoa, I really understand this now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Still she had gazed but, uh, gazed, but midst the tide, two angel forms were seen to glide. Because I, I, when I picture fish, I, I can, I love the fluidity of motion, and it reminds me almost, almost of angels and something like that. I love the over ten thousand miles. Yeah, because it kind, of, I don't know, it's so cheesy, but it's like, I don't know, it's so true at the same time. Find poems where you want to understand the poem better. Don't necessarily go for the poems that are the most clear to you in the first reading. I think the most interesting recitations come from a relationship that's been built up with the poem through a little bit of wrestling. I chose my poem based around which one I couldn't actually understand. Um, I chose this one because I really thought it was, the first time I read it, I really thought it was kind of interesting. Most because I didn't really comprehend what he was trying to say. In the beginning it was a little bit difficult to understand and I thought that really interested me. I don't know, when I started reading I thought the tone, as I said, was going to be like really happy and like mm -hmm. cheery. But then like as you get you get on, you get like this sort of like reminiscent tone of like recalling old times or like thinking of like this wonderland life or whatever. So I sort of like that whole like tone, I, like that whole tone throughout the mm -hmm. whole poem. So I just thought of it as a really pretty way to break up with someone. Uh -huh. but after we talked, it turned into a really actual great way to just express loss, and I felt like it was very forlorn, but still beautiful to listen to. Like, oh, dream within a dream. I love Inception. Oh, Edgar Allan Poe. He's cool. <laughs> I printed it out. So, yeah. Just pick a poem you really like. Uh, you know, if you do one that you kind of think is interesting or you really enjoy doing, then you're going to do a much better job. If you, if you leave yourself open so that you don't have any, you're not looking for a poem that says something you want to say. You're not looking for a poem that's going to convince someone to believe what you believe. You're, you're just looking for an opening. I would say it's the same state of mind that one wants to be in when meeting someone new. And it's an intuitive experience, but when you feel that click, and it can really be as simple as that you just like it. In the same way that if someone had asked you to explain your, why you like your favorite music, it's sometimes a very difficult thing to explain or defend, but it's v at a very personal gut level, you just know this is a, your song.